2007, we will be continuing our work with whole numbers and we'll be working with exponents that are whole numbers and we'll also be working with the rule for the order of operations. We'll be dealing with problems where we have operations of adding, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and also symbols of inclusion like parentheses. And we'll be learning which, which operation we work with first, the order in which we work the problem. Remember, as you're listening to the tape, take careful notes, and if a concept is unclear to you, stop the tape and get help. We will begin on the tape by discussing exponents. The expression A with a superscript of N is an exponential expression, or we call it a power. When we read this expression, we read it A to the nth power. The superscript, or the symbol that's raised, in this case the end, is our exponent. The A is called our base. What A to the nth power means is that the A is multiplied by itself n times. Whatever the n is, that's how many times that the A is multiplied by itself. Or the A is a factor in times. Let's look at a, a power in which the exponent is actually a number. Here we have X raised to the fourth power. X raised to the fourth power. The four is our exponent. The X is our base. And it means that the x or the base is multiplied by itself four times. x is a factor four times. So the exponent in a problem indicates how many times the base is a factor. So the, the exponent of the four tells us to multiply the base x by itself four times. Here's another exponential expression, x to the second power. When the exponent is two, it's given a special name because this is one of the exponents we use a lot. You can read it x to the second power, or you can call it x squared, x squared. The 2 is sometimes read x squared. Another exponent that we use a lot is an exponent of 3. So here's the case where we have x to the third power. The special name for the 3 besides just the third power is x cubed. So you might read that x cubed. Now let's do some problems that involve exponents. Let's begin with 4 raised to the second power, or our other way of reading that is 4 squared. Okay, what this means is our base 4 would be a factor 2 times. So I take my base 4 and write it down 2 times, and so my answer would be 16. 4 to the second power would be 16. Let's do another. This one, our exponent is a 3, so we read that 5 to the third power, or 5 cubed. So since our base is 5, it means 5 is a factor 3 times. So we'd write the 5 down. and we'd write it down three times, and then we need to multiply that out. Now, to multiply it out, let's multiply the first two fives together. That would give us 25, and then we've got to multiply 25 times 5. 
if we multiply 25 times 5, if you need to, come over to the side and do that, but you will end up getting 125. So 5 cubed is 125. Let's do one more. 2 to the 4th power. Now, we don't have a special name for exponent of 4. Okay, this means 2 is a factor 4 times. So let's write 2 down 4 times. And let's begin to multiply. Two, if we do the first 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Then if we take that and multiply it by the next 2, we have A. And then we have one more 2 over there left to multiply it by. And we come up with 16. So 2 to the 4th power is 16. Another way to do that, I'm going to show you over here, I wrote my four twos down. Since you remember that we can multiply in any order that we want to, or we can group things any way that we want to, I might do those two and do these two, and that would be four and four, and then multiply those two together, and then that would give me 16. So you can, after you put your four twos down, you can multiply them in any order you'd like. Let's look at a few more examples. This is 18 squared, which means 18 is a factor two times. And I want to particularly pick one that we could not do in our head. To get this answer, we'd have to multiply this out. So let's come over here and do this. 18 times 18. 8 times 8 is 64. Carrier 6. 8 and 6 would give us 14. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. So if we add that up, we end up with 324. So 18 squared would give us 324. Let's look at another example. 6 to the first power. Okay, when you see something raised to the first power, it means 6 is a factor one time. So it just means you're going to have 1, 6. So I'm just going to write a 6 down. So my answer will just be 6. Anytime you raise something to the first power, you'll end up getting 6. So we have a rule that says a to the first power will give you a where A is any whole number. Now we also have a rule that we're not actually going to use very much, but it will be used later on in algebra that tells us if you have an exponent of zero, things don't work out maybe the way you think they would. If you have a zero exponent and a number is raised to a zero power, you end up getting one for your answer. The reason it works that way is because of think some things that happen later we'll find that happen with exponents when we get into algebra. And so for us now, we just have to accept this as being a definition or a rule. And if we ever see an exponent of zero, we always remember that that gives us an answer of one. And our base here is any whole number except for zero. You can't raise the number zero to the zero power, but any other number raised to the zero power will give you an answer of one.